things first. We are going through and we are going to turn all of the lights on. Hello. All right, so last time I shot, it was not a real estate shoot, which means I've got to rebalance the gimbal because for this realtor, I do all of the videos vertical, optimized for Instagram reels and TikTok. So it just takes a moment here to make sure that uh, we're all balanced with the FX3 mounted vertical. You ever get your gimbal in a knot? Because that's what's happening right now. Get on there, there we go. These Manfrotto quick release plates are the best. Oh, look at that. That's not gonna be hard. Okay, and you know the, the gimbal's perfectly balanced. So when you can move it in any direction and it stays. So it looks like we're almost there. Almost, almost, come on. Perfect. Eh. It's not perfect, but it's it's good enough. It's good enough for the motors to kick on. All right, so as you can see, we got the RS2 FX3 Sony G Master 14 millimeter 1.8. Thing is incredible um, in tight spots, low light, and then cheat code for all the BTS stuff, I throw the Insta360 X3, I think it is. Just on the gimbal, kind of gives a really unique perspective just in case I wanna post anything later for me. Not everything's for the realtor. All right, power on. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, lights on. All right, so normally, we're gonna start with the main living space, get all of these sweeping spots. Sometimes I'm working with another photographer here or the homeowners, um, and it's just nice. Uh, they're actually out right now, so it's, it's nice to just have the, the place to yourself and, and take the time that you need to get the shot we need. Dude, I really like you, but this is a lot. All right, so one of my favorite things to do is just to find a small detail in the house and then slowly uh, push in on it from across the room. So in this case, we're going to choose that eat sign up there. And we're slowly, She's, that cat is going crazy right now. What just happened? This house is a little tricky too because uh, there's all different colors of lighting in here. We got outdoor lights, we got these warm lights, cool lights, perfect, that was better. So I always go through and I shoot everything with the 14 millimeter, and then if there's any cool details, uh, then I'll always go through with either the 35 or the uh, 24 or even the 85 if I really wanna punch in on something, add some depth. There we go, wish I knew how to turn that ceiling fan on. Couldn't figure it out. Okay, let's get that same thing from a different angle. This cat is going wild, I should just lock it up. Lock her up. Okay. So kind of push in the key with the smooth gimbal, just to lock off the elbows at a 90 degree. Is that 90 degrees? Kinda. Let's see if we can get this cat to participate. Lincoln, I want you to stay right there. Sometimes it's fun to have an animal in the video, right? Yeah, they'll love that. Stay there, Lincoln. Stay there. Stay there, Lincoln. Good, Lincoln. Oh boy. There he goes. So Evan, what should my f-stop be at in real estate? Well, let me tell you. Um, I used to think that it was always as low or as wide open as you could get it. But growth is realizing that the f-stop should probably be whatever you want your depth to be. <laughs> so in real estate, uh, you want everything to be pretty sharp. Uh, unless you're going for a really narrow depth of field. So you probably want to keep that f-stop open to about 
anywhere between three, six, and eight. Um, you know, outside I'll do F16, F22, just because you can, you know, you can. Just because you can. There's no such thing as out of focus when you're shooting an F22. Mark my words. Right, Lincoln? Right. So the question is, how many of these shots am I going to get before I'm happy with it? Ooh, I'm happy with it. There we go. Boom. Boom, baby. Well-stocked bar over here. All right, so one thing that I love to do, uh, but I can't do with this house, is kind of turn the house into a track where I can start in one location, go completely around the house, try to capture as many rooms as possible in one continuous shot. The layout of this one's a little difficult just because it's, it's not as open as a lot of houses that I shoot, so not possible. All right, this bedroom is particularly tricky because it's dark, there's mirrors everywhere, and it's kind of small. So, peace out. How do we get around this mirror? Um, and we're just gonna have to kind of do a boring one of these shots here. We're just gonna have to give it one of these slow reveals, which I'll probably do with this, this lens here and then maybe the 35 kind of give it something exciting. Give this bedroom something, something. All right, bathroom shot. Can't do much with the bathroom other than push in on that toilet, baby. That's the one. Has a nice throne. Get the laundry room real quick. Uh, move the coffee. I always leave my coffee. It's, it's always, it's incredible the things you find when you watch these videos back. Like, oh, you left your coffee in there, you doofus. Looks like we got a Lincoln cameo in this one. See, personally, I don't mind the cat being in it. Like, people have pets. I think more people have pets than, than don't. I'm just looking to get a few more shots of the main living space here before I move upstairs. I guess we gotta get the exterior as well, which That'll take some time with this one because I think that's probably the nicest thing about this place is the exterior. Good thing we're not in for some severe weather today. <laughs> we definitely are. Dude, Lincoln, get out of the sink. I never shoot myself walking up the stairs because that's a nightmare. Uh, but if there's any way you can kind of push in in the video, I mean, it kind of, it, obviously it implies that you're going upstairs, so let's go. I'm not so sure, like, everything I'm saying makes sense because I'm shooting and talking. Um, so, gonna find out in the edit that I am really, really not good at narrating while I, what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Probably just gonna go up here, get the, the loft area. There's two or three small bedrooms up there, so grab those. Ooh, it's hot up here. Okay, a little dark, a little dark, but we adjust. We raise that ISO to where it's not gonna be very messy. This is the FX3, so, you know, it's perfect. All right, in this room, it looks like we got a lot of natural light coming in, so push in. Ooh, that was good. Let's do it again, because the focus jumped. Right now I'm shooting at f3.5. Um, I try to do manual focus, but sometimes you kind of have to switch over to auto. That's what focus peaking is for, guys. That's what focus peaking is for. Nice bedroom, there's Lincoln. All right, master bathroom time, or I should say main bathroom because master of the house is no longer a chill term, which it shouldn't be. We got a nursery. Here we go. 
There it is. So at this point, I am good to go. Oh, that's a sweet Gandalf picture. Uh, see? <laughs> that's rad. Love Gandalf. It's not the, it's not what you do with your time that you're, I don't, what's he say? He said, fly you fools. All right, it is officially detail time. It's our favorite time of the day. Turn this off, turn this off. And we are going to go with the 35 because this house is not very open. So what that means is we are swapping out the 1418. Thank you for your service. Throw on the 3518 Sony. I think it's just like the FE lens. It's awesome. Love this thing. It's probably probably top three lenses. I couldn't tell you my top two lenses. But you know what that means? This lens is a lot smaller. So we gotta we gotta rebalance this bad boy. There we go, just like that. <laughs> Once again, it is not perfect. Or even yeah, it's not perfect. But um, the, the thing is like I guess my theory of, of balancing the gimbal perfectly is it just helps the motors, helps the battery life, but the gimbal's motors are going to be strong enough to at least hold it steady and keep the, keep the shot clean. So um, if it's not perfect and you're kind of not in a hurry, but just like you're not going to be at this balance all day, then then you're, you're kosher. You're good. All right. So the first thing I noticed when I got to this house was this insane stovetop. <laughs> I don't imagine they're taking that with them. So that stays, that goes with the house. Lower that F stop down to one eight. Cause when we're doing details, man, we want that depth of field. So let's get that exposure right. There we go. So we're just gonna hide behind this corner over here and we're going to slowly walk out Eh, that was a first try. Not too good. It's funny, I find walking backwards is so much more stable. Um, even though it's so much, I don't know, riskier. When you're walking forward, you don't have to think about it. When you're walking backwards, you really got to think about it. Like, what was behind me? There wasn't a fountain there, was there? Okay, get the trash can. Perfect. Good detail. Other kitchen details. Sometimes it's fun to incorporate a little branding just in case you get a sponsor. Blanton's and Eagle Rare about to hit me up. Eat. Just good, good kitchen advice. I love it when my signs tell me what to do in that room. Okay. And around. Got that sink shot. Good. Lincoln, no. Out of here. Right, maybe it doesn't matter. No, Lincoln. No. Stop it. No, Lincoln! It's the island. Remember that movie with Ewan McGregor? Lincoln, I'm Lincoln! That might not even be like an accurate movie reference, but it doesn't stop me from trying. Okay. Here we go. Let's get a couple more details up here. All right. It happened. I ran out of card space on that last shot, so. Gotta find the thing that's taking up all the space. Oh shoot. All right, I am done with the inside. Uh, I gotta go outside. I'll leave my stuff in here because it's supposed to start raining soon. Um, but yeah, I think we're good in here. Dude, Lincoln, chill out. All right, 
yikes. So since the detail lens was already on there, we're just gonna leave that on and then switch back to my wide angle once we're all finished with details outside. Really cool looking house. So make sure if, uh, if you ever have something like this, you gotta highlight these things. Look at that, rad. Walk around in the landscape a little bit, but it's all right. Push up, good. Anything around here? Oh uh, yeah, see? Walk around this side of the house, you miss this. It's really cool architecture. Honestly, like this house is cooler on the outside than it is the inside. The inside is beautiful, but uh, it's just so unique and I don't know, love it. This house was definitely built with entertainment in mind, like the size of this patio. And I got this fire pit area down here. That's really cool. It's funny, sometimes you just point the camera up and you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of a cool shot. We'll get that real quick, why not? Angles, man, angles. Just in case you were wondering, this house does not have your standard siding. It's this cool wooden shale thing. I love it, I love it. Oh, jeez. So we're good on the details outside. Um, let's get this guy back on here. Rebalance. Good enough. All right, so like I was saying, uh, outside I like to have my f-stop uh, you know, up, up towards f, f11, f16. If possible, everything's gonna be in focus. Um, I don't need any depth of field outside here necessarily. It'd be beautiful if the leaves were green, but hey, it's March in the Midwest, so it's April. Shoot, shoot. I do always try to shoot, you know, double my frame rate with my shutter speed, but sometimes <laughs> it doesn't work. I don't have any ND filters for this lens because it's huge. Um, so in that case, we're just going to crank the shutter, use base ISO as much as possible. And then here we go, 125. So, so I'm shooting at 60p, so we want 125 for shutter. Get out of here. And then we'll have that f-stop at f14. Really glad it's not raining today. Look at that. Slowly walk up. I use my joystick all the time. Um, usually if I'm moving one direction, I always try to parallax the opposite direction with the joystick. That makes sense. So if I'm moving right, I'll move the camera left as I move right. So as I'm moving left, I'm moving the camera right, parallaxing around. Dude, my car is in every one of my videos. Oops. So you might be asking, how much is too much footage? The answer is I already have too much footage because the deliverable here is a one minute video optimized for social and TikTok. So it really, I'll have too much stuff to work with here. And I think 50% of this video is gonna be featuring the outside of the house just because of how, how cool it is versus um, just the, the inside, uh, that main living space is the coolest area in there. So yeah, um, just about wrapped here. I'm out of breath, man, gotta work out. There's already bugs out, man. Okay, so I don't normally shoot the back of the house unless the back of the house is cool. Um, this one, you know, it's got a hot tub back here, so we better shoot it just in case uh, that goes with the house. Uh, but in, 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 speaking of things you don't really shoot, I don't really shoot closets unless they're immaculate. I don't shoot, I don't shoot garages unless they're immaculate. If there's any, I mean, it just shoot what's, shoot what's cool, especially when you're looking at a one minute video, like, you're not gonna have time to, to hit on every single piece uh, of the house. I mean, this, I always say like, these videos aren't exactly a virtual walkthrough uh, like you might get with like a 3D camera setup. 
where you can go from room to room. These videos are really just to make the house look cool. Sometimes it's to make the house look cooler than it is. Uh, in this case, this house is pretty cool itself. So um, don't really need to work hard, but yeah, uh, that's, that's what these videos are. It's just a quick music video for the house, engaging with it any way you can, showing the details, showing the highlights, showing what people, what I find interesting, I think other people would find interesting. So that's, that's the whole name of the game, man. Ooh, there's poop everywhere back here. Phooey. Okay, we got a hot tub, we got the hot tub shot. Nothing, nothing fancy. It is what it is. All right, so just turned all the lights off. Uh, all set inside the house and outside of the house, except for the drone. So uh, that's the only other thing I got to do. Droopy, droopy gimbal. Um, so usually that takes two or three minutes to get the drone up, uh, get the exterior footage, the property, really cool fountain here. Got a nice outbuilding. I might actually, I'll need to grab a little video of that. Um, but yeah, that's a wrap. Uh, their car is in the driveway, but they're actually, they're on vacation right now. So I can't, can't do anything about that. All right, we are done with the gimbal. So to pack this up, all right, throw this in the car. It's getting a little windier. Hopefully the audio is still okay. Okay, and zip that up. All right. We're taken to the skies. All right, so this shouldn't take longer than about four or five minutes. Uh, <laughs> the wind is starting to really pick up. We're supposed to get some nasty storms today too, so hopefully that holds off for like 10 more minutes so I can get out of here. Uh, thing about drones with this real estate videography, the way I deliver them is vertical and this drone does not shoot vertical. Uh, so it's super obnoxious to have to try to, like in your mind, you're like, okay, where can I go? How, how wide do I have to get this in order to get the shot that I want? All right, we're up. Okay, so you kind of see the property here. It's flying backwards, oh boy. We don't want to lose connection. Oh boy, it's getting windy. It's getting really windy. Okay, don't love that. This drone is the Mavic Air 2S. It is awesome. That's a, see, this is the better shot. The, the Mavic Air 2S, it's awesome. It's got a, a Hasselblad sensor on it. Um, it does everything I need it to. All the smart features are pretty cool. Okay, think I'm happy. I am not gonna get this thing up too high because it is gale force winds. Oh boy. So the question is, have I crashed my drone before? Yeah. Who hasn't crashed their drone before? Um, I've crashed it a few times, but the only time that I actually broke it was I was shooting inside of a factory um, under a bunch of racking, um, flying under it, and and uh, I pulled up a little too soon and it just shattered, basically. So yeah, had to send it out. But the company I sent it out to, they took a long time and their communication wasn't great, but they got it fixed at a pretty reasonable price. I think it was only, like it was a pretty goofed up drone. I, I assumed it would be cheaper to buy a new one. And I think the price was only about 300 bucks, which is like, heck yeah. I'm not spending, spend, I'm not spending another 1300 on this. So obviously if you're shooting a home by yourself, make sure the doors are all locked, make sure the garage, you know, that's shut, all the lights are off, pretty much leave it exactly how you found it because you don't want to be in a situation uh, where uh, they're blaming you for something you didn't do. All right, so that is a wrap on the shoot. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I find it interesting when people show kind of what they do, their, their workflow when they do something creative like this. Um, you know, it's very systematic, but it's also a lot of a lot, a lot of freedom to do, do something like this. So, yeah, I, uh, I hope this turns out legible. I mean, I don't, I don't know how I am at speaking um, while, while performing this kind of thing. So, yeah, let's see how it, let's see how it goes.